Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. I am sitting in front of a new laser engraving and or cutting machine. This is the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt version of the machine. It was sent to me by X-Tool, so thank you guys very much for letting me review this product on my channel. There are a lot of videos out there showing you how to engrave coasters or cutting boards with this machine, but that's not really the scope of this video. What I want to see is how I can use this machine as a knife maker. If the laser is what got you onto this video, I'm a handmade custom knife maker working in Texas, and I'm always looking for ways to improve my workflow, speed, and efficiency. There are a few things that came to mind right away when looking at this machine that could be applicable to knife making. First of all, I thought of leather work. I would like to be able to cut out my templates for sheaths on this machine so I can have a very nice profile of leather to start my sheath making process. The second thing is maybe cutting out templates on blades, especially if I'm doing a stock removal style knife. It's nice to have a wooden template to trace out onto the steel. If you all recently saw some of my buoy build videos, you can see that I made a template on the guard as well so that I can trace the guard design onto the knife once it was assembled. These templates are normally one half or one quarter of a guard, so it would be nice to be able to make those as well because it's kind of tedious making those by hand. Now, I'm not quite sure if this machine is strong enough for etching in my maker's mark on a piece of steel. I don't think that it is, but I'm going to test it anyway. I think it may work better on an acid stonewash blade, so that's what we're gonna test it on. Those are some of the main things I'm thinking of trying with this machine, but I think there are some other applications such as custom boxes for knives that you sell, maybe custom stands, or displays for blade shows and things of that nature. So the realm of possibilities with a CNC laser like this is, is really large. So I'm, I'm excited to go down that rabbit hole. So with that, we'll start with our first little project here, which is going to be cutting out a wooden template to trace around for stock removal knife making. This allows the user to come back to the same design and quickly turn out the same knife without having to print it out on a piece of paper and glue it to the steel. All right, so on test number one for the template, this, I actually did not space the laser height appropriately. I forgot about it, to be honest, and I left it about a half inch off of the wood. So you can see the result. It's a really thick line and it burned in and actually didn't cut all the way through. When I put the laser down to the appropriate height, it looks like it did cut all the way through in our template here. Let's see if we can get it out. Yeah, so this is our template. It cut the holes nicely. Uh, I may be using slightly too much power for an eighth of an inch. I'm using 100% power, so it probably burned through it a little harder than it needed to. But uh, yeah, this is the template, and uh, let's see how it would work onto a piece of steel. All right, so as far as the template goes, I think that worked pretty darn good. I'll definitely be using that on my knives that I want to do repeatedly down the road, or if there's just a design that I like that I want to store essentially on my pegboard, and I can always come back to it years down the road, trace onto a piece of steel and make the knife. That's very useful for the stock removal knife making world. Also, I was thinking on forged blades, you could make a template before forging the blade have it sitting next to your anvil so that you have a nice guide on what you're shooting for with your forge blade. So lots of applications there. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna move on to leather work. I wanna see how I can engrave leather with this machine first, and then we'll work on cutting leather, making a sheath template. But 
Before I do that, I wanted to make sure that I can engrave nicely so when I cut the template, I can actually engrave in my leather stamp or my maker's mark onto the leather before cutting out the profile. So we're gonna put in a test piece of leather and see how it engraves. I'd say that's pretty darn good. I did a slightly higher power setting on the letters than the rest of the stuff here. So the letters are a 30 power and the circles are a 20 power. And I think they came out pretty darn good. I, I will say that I forgot to turn on the air assist when I did this engraving, which doesn't seem to have caused that much of a negative uh, result, but I'll try it again with the air assist on just to see what happens. But I'm pretty encouraged with these results. All right, so you can really see the difference here. I upped the power on all the circles in the beard on the right hand side here. So this is a little bit deeper and darker. So I upped the power to 30 from 20. It was 20 on this side, 30 power on this side, same speed. And you can see that the darker edge on the circle in the beard definitely come out better on a piece of leather after it's had some oil applied to it. And of course this oil will dry a little bit, but it's definitely nice to have a deeper etch here in my opinion. I think it looks better and if you start bending and using this sheath potentially will last longer I would imagine. So yeah I think it does a pretty darn good job at putting maker's marks in leather. So when I make my sheath I'm going to be applying this stamp to the sheath before cutting out the profile. Alright so I would call that a major win on engraving leather. It came out nice and crisp. I feel like that's going to look really good on the back of my sheaths by the belt loop, which is where I normally put my maker's mark with the stamp. So I think that's going to look great. We're going to be cutting out the sheath. Before I do, I want to see what this thing will do with just a piece of cardboard. In between these projects, I had a piece of cardboard and I figured, what would it look like if I'm sending a knife to somebody and I can engrave my emblem or a nice message to them on cardboard. So while I have the stamp, uh, file loaded up on the computer. I'm going to bring the power down and just see what it does on cardboard before moving on to cutting out the profile of the sheath in 8 to 9 ounce leather. So yeah, this came out pretty good. I used a 25 power and 75 millimeters per second on the circle and the words and 20 power on the beard at the same speed. So yeah, this works pretty good. You could use this on a box if you're gonna be selling a knife to a customer. You can put a detailed message on the inside of the box. So I think, I think that could be useful. All right, so now let's do the hard one. Let's do the sheath. And this, this next one's really what we're looking for here. All right, so on to a harder project. This is going to be the cutting of a sheath template which is really one of the major reasons why I wanted to test out one of these machines because having a nice sheath template to work off of in the leather, I mean profiling the leather itself, not, not a template per se, but more of a cutting of the profile, having that nice and symmetrical from the beginning makes the whole process that much easier when making a handmade leather sheath. So you can do that with a head knife or hopefully you can do that with a CNC laser. I think that two things that will really make this possible on this machine is A, having a nice honeycomb bed, whether that's an off brand or an X tool brand, and B, having an air assist module like I have sitting right here from X tool. So having the air assist I think is gonna be critical to stop any charring or burning on the edges. 
And the same goes with the honeycomb bed that allows kind of the, uh, the cutting power to go through the material and not get backstopped by a piece of wood or whatever table you have it sitting on. So those two things I think will be critical. And this is really, like I said, the main reason I want this guy. And also uh, probably the hardest thing we've done so far. I mean, this is eight to nine ounce leather from Wicken and Craig. It's veg tan leather that had been dyed brown. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna make sure to have very good ventilation. You may be able to hear the fans in the background. I'm gonna make sure to have very good ventilation when doing this, uh, just cause leather kind of stinks when you burn it like this. So that's gonna be what we're doing next. All right, so here we are in light burn. This is our sheath template. I'm actually not gonna cut this welt on the first pass. I wanna make sure that the sheath cuts just fine and there's no warpage in the leather before I make the second cut on the welt. If you look at the sheath, I went ahead and put our emblem in here. Uh, the only reason I separated out the blue and the yellow is because I wanted to cut a line around the fill on the yellow. So I have more pronounced corners on my beard here and also on the circle. So we'll see how that does. I put two little fill sections on the sheath in the red circles. This is so that my adhesive my contact cement actually sticks better. I kind of want a cross hatch pattern here uh, so that I have better uh, adhesion. You know, I normally do this with a an awl to kind of scratch it up, but we'll see if uh, this laser can kind of scratch it up for me. And while I'm engraving the leather, I kind of want to run another test. So I put these circles here. These circles are 0 0.03 inches in diameter. So half of a 16, so a 32nd. And the reason is I kind of want to see how small this thing can do so that if I go uh, maybe even smaller than this in the future, I can actually mark out where I want my stitch line to be and maybe even my, my stitches themselves. So that's kind of a little test I'm running on the same, on the same system. And then with the test I've done already on cutting leather, I know that I can cut leather at a 10 speed 10 millimeters per second speed and 100 power. So that's gonna be this black line going all the way around. So that's the test and uh, let's frame it first, make sure that we're in frame, which it looks like we are. I'm going to turn on my air assist. And then before we start the job, I always like right click and go in the preview Okay, this job is going to take about four minutes and uh, it looks like it's going to start on the emblem which is the way i want it to start so that's perfect we can even run it real fast on here at 40x so it starts with the emblem does the other uh, lines in the middle of the sheet then cuts out the outline that's perfect i'm gonna say okay i'm gonna go with start and uh let's see how it goes Probably could have gone one or two steps lower on the speed because right here is just a little fiber or two. I'll still call it a major success. I'll just know in the future to go a little slower. So. All right, so this is how it turned out. It cut the template out pretty darn good. This is obviously a pouch sheet, so it'll fold over like that. This will fold down like that and you'll be able to have your knife in here. Now, I still need to cut the welt, and I'll do that next. One thing I wanted to mention is that on my mark here, uh, it came out okay. It looks like, let's see if I can focus in. It looks like it cut a weird line there and there on the peaks of the beard. You know, I think this is fine. It's not the end of the world, but in the future, I want to figure out what caused that. We did that little test here, if you can see on these little dots. Uh, I probably need to raise the power if I'm going to do that again, but it does mark just fine. So if I need a target to uh, poke holes on my stitching in the future, I can probably use that feature. 
Didn't really do any cross hatching here. I must have accidentally used a line setting instead of cross hatching. But the nice thing is I have a target to line up these two circles when I'm doing my glue up and stitching on the belt loop. So that's cool. So yeah, so far uh, we're looking good here on the leather sheath making. I'll move on from here and cut the welt and then uh, we'll have all the pieces needed to make a sweet sheath. Oh yeah, one last thing, I'll look at the edges here. They actually look pretty good. I mean, you know, they're slightly charred black because we just cut it with a laser, but there's no fraying or anything. So this is actually a cleaner cut uh, sometimes than I normally get with a head knife. So that's that's pretty nice. I'm gonna see how these finish on the final product. I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine, but you know, if anything goes wrong, I'll make sure to let y'all know. But yeah, this is the sheath and let's do the well. All right, so I re-ran my file on the sheath. I made some modifications to the stamp so that it doesn't cut as deep. I didn't want there to be large cuts in the back of a sheath uh, just for moisture and for durability long term. So I dialed back the strength. I also went to the line option instead of the fill option for the words, which I think looks really, really crisp. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna roll with that on the emblem. It also didn't have this weird flaw that the first one had. I'm not really sure what caused that, but uh, but yeah, it looks way better. When it comes to the back of the belt loop, I went with the fill option here instead of the line that I did on the other sheath. This kind of gives me a little bit of texture for the contact cement to adhere to. This would be stitched anyway, but it's always nice to scuff up the, uh, the nice smooth side of the leather when you're gluing. So this will fold down like that. So yeah, the cut is really clean. I love how clean the cut is. And uh, this is gonna be great for sheath making and templates and stuff like that in the future. So very, very happy with the performance when it comes to cutting leather. As y'all saw, that went really well. And I'm super stoked about this because that's one of the major reasons I wanted to get this machine in my shop. So I can now make sheath templates really fast with this thing, cut them out. If I'm making multiple knives in a batch, I can cut out multiple sheets pretty quickly. It only takes about two or three minutes to do that work to cut it out. Most of the time today that I spent making this thing is on the trial and error of the different settings. And now that I have those settings figured out, which I'll put on the screen here uh, for this machine, it's gonna be really fast cutting out sheets in the future. The biggest issue I actually had wasn't cutting out the sheet, but it was more so on my maker's mark. I didn't want it to go too deep from a durability standpoint. And I also didn't want it to be too light so that you couldn't see it. So that was a rough balance. I'm not really 100% sure if in the future I will be using the machine to etch in my maker's mark on leather sheets. I may go with the stamp still. I may have like a light outline of a circle so I can line up my stamp very well and still use the stamp. I'm on the fence, I'm not sure. We'll see how this one does uh, in my sheet making process. But just cutting out the template is half the battle. I have a nice, quickly cut out, perfectly symmetrical sheet template and that goes a long way in making sheets. So uh, stay tuned to the channel for the sheet making stuff. I'll probably continue to mess around with it. I may put stitch lines in there in the future. Uh, I think there's also the potential to do some sort of tooling, but you may run into the same issues with cutting in the outer layer of the sheet more than you'd like to. So tooling may still be uh, better done with stamps. With that being done, the next step here and probably the last project I'm gonna show on uh, the intro to this machine for my shop is going to be trying to etch steel. I have a piece of 1084 high carbon steel that I've heat treated and I have stone washed. It's not a knife, but it's the same material I would make a knife out of. And I just wanna see if I can etch in my maker's mark into the side of a piece of steel, a piece of hardened steel. So I've seen that this thing can etch stainless and I'm just curious to see what would happen. I don't have very high expectations for what this thing can do on steel. I know that I, I, I normally use a electrochemical etching solution and uh, it, it goes really deep into the steel. So I don't think I'm gonna wanna replace that. 
we'll see how deep this thing can go, but uh, it will be cool to see, you know, what it's capable of. So that's next. All right, so that's the results there. I'm actually surprised at how well this did. Like, my fingernail actually can feel some depth there. It's not a lot of depth, but it's definitely there. Pretty surprising. I think I'm gonna run another one, but maybe uh, a little slower and see what happens. So the second round is definitely deeper. Definitely produced some heat as well. This is a little warm to the touch, but much deeper than the first at half the speed. So we're talking about five millimeters per second. And uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of shocked. You could probably finish this off with some sandpaper, put some brass black into the maker's mark and it would look pretty good. I think I am going to try and turn this thing over and turn the air assist off and see if I actually get a little bit darker of a mark. I'm kind of curious to see if I can get a darker mark with the air assist off or not. Uh, but, you know, like I said, this is strangely good. Okay, the uh, bottom one had the air assist turned off. The top one had the air assist turned on. Uh, when it comes to the steel, I think the air assist turns on is better. It's a little crisper. Definitely some discoloration there, but, you know, still surprisingly deep etch. I mean, I've had uh, electrochemical etches that were not as deep as this. Now, nowadays I normally hit it with DC power multiple times, so it is nice and deep, but in the past I've definitely uh, not gotten this deep. I'm gonna run one more to the left here with a double pass just to see uh, how deep we can get it. All right, so this one on the left had two passes on it with the air assist. It's significantly deeper than the first two on the right. And uh, we're gonna finish this thing up with sandpaper and put some brass black in it, just to kind of see what the final product would look like if we were using this to etch our maker's mark into a blade. A couple things to notice on the depth here. The first two were obviously shallower because you can see some of the Texas here is going away and some of my name here is going away on the top. So these two with one pass probably wouldn't cut it for putting in a maker's mark. The one on the left with two passes is still there. So we're gonna brass black that guy and see how it looks. So am I surprised? Yep, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that it got this deep. It's not as deep as my normal etch, but this only took about six minutes to run on the machine. You could always come back and run it again. You can run it for 12, maybe 24 minutes and get it pretty deep probably. Put some brass black in it like I just did. And uh, yeah, you get a pretty good etch. I'm shocked that this, you know, fairly inexpensive when compared to CO2 lasers. This fairly inexpensive laser from that regard can uh, etch into high carbon steel. So I'm pretty impressed with that for sure. So this is the part of the video where I'll go into my impressions of this machine, my initial impressions, because that's, that's all this video really is, is kind of an intro to the machine to my shop. I'll probably be figuring out new ways to use it in the future. I definitely will be after its performance with these tests, but I'm really shocked that it did so well, especially on the high carbon steel. I didn't expect it to be able to get a deep etch into high carbon steel. Uh, you could really use this to put your maker's mark on high, high end handmade custom knives. So I'm impressed that it can do that. I didn't expect it to do that, but I'm impressed that it can. Cutting out leather is a huge win for me, especially for the sheath making game. It saves a ton of time to be able to cut out your leather symmetrically and cleanly. So I'm stoked to use it for that. And you know, when you get one of these things, your mind just starts racing on the different things that you can accomplish with it. Custom jigs, 
you could scribe in a line on metal and grind to it, you know, just mark a line and grind to it. You can do a lot of things with this machine, so I'm excited to think of creative ways to use it in the future. Now it's worth noting that Xtool did send me this tool for free, and I will say, I get a lot of offers for people sending me equipment. And if I get a piece of equipment and it's garbage, I won't put up a review. That's kind of my standard. If I get a piece of equipment and it's good, I'll put up a review. If I get a piece of equipment from a manufacturer and it's complete garbage, my plan has always been to send it back. However, with the sponsored products that I've gotten so far, there's only been a handful of them and they've all been pretty darn good. You know, one of them specifically is this mini mill here from littlemachineshop.com. I kind of already knew it was going to be good before they sent it to me based on other customer reviews and it lived up to the name. This thing also lived up to the X-Tool brand. I know that they are kind of known for being a higher end version of these DIY lasers. So I'm really happy that A, I don't have to send it back because that could be awkward and B, that I have it in my shop. It's going to be very cool to use in the future with a ton of projects that I can think of just going forward. So I'm, I'm super excited to have it. If y'all enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. Oh, and if, if you wanna see how this sheet turns out in the future, uh, I'm gonna be posting that build video for the knife and finishing out the sheath in that video as well. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so it pops up on your feed. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.